Hey guys, this is Danielle from So Much Crafting and I am here today making new dividers for my personal size Filofax Malden. I mentioned in my last video that February is obviously over um, and I'm kind of craving something different than just the Valentine's Day dividers. These were made, I made them from using papers from Scribble Prints Co. She had a traveler's notebook kit that I used and sometimes I'll buy papers like that that are double-sided and that come that way. Other times what I will do is what I did today and I found some digital paper that I liked on Etsy and I printed my own papers. So what you can see is I actually did them double-sided. It's the same print on the front and the back. You could do two different prints if you liked you know, if you like that, um, like them to be different. I usually just do the same print on the front and the back. Um, I did take a little video while I was printing. If it's decent quality, I'll insert it here. But the gist of it was that I print one side and then I rotate my images, go back through and print the other side so that on a directional pattern like this, my printer is double-sided. It has the capability of doing that. But um, if I'm not careful, what will happen is the front will be like this and the back will look upside down. It'll be like this. And so what I typically do is one side, then I flip it over and do the other side. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through my process here today. I'm going to do as much of it as I can. If this gets to be a long video or a long um, process, then I will try to speed it up while I'm editing. But um, this is kind of the thought process I, process I go through. You can see that I have three different pink prints and then three more blue toned prints. And what I will usually do is alternate them as well as not put, like see how this one has the lines and this one has lines, so I wouldn't necessarily put those back to back and then the dots as well. Now, I say that loosely because I may not have much of a choice. There may be too much um, to do with the, with the patterns and whatnot, um, but I think what I'll do is this, I think I want this to be my front divider, and then I will do this blue flower with a little flourish. Then I'm gonna do the pink then I'll do this blue dot, then I'll do this pink, and then I'll do the flower. Is that what I want? Um, it's either that or I'll flip these two, but then I have the directional, like I said, and the dots, or this is kind of the process I go through where I, I really just have to stop and Take a second and think about how I want it to look. Let's try flipping these two because they're more printy. Okay, so let's do this. Boom, boom, boom. Nope, not like that. How did I have it before? I think I had it like this. I think I'm gonna do this. It doesn't matter too much because there is spacing between, you know, my papers. You don't see them back to back. Is that what I want or do I want to flip these two? Ah. So this is, this is usually what takes the longest is deciding how I want it to look, how I want my papers to come out. I just didn't want those two next to each other. Okay, we're going back to how we had it at the beginning. Like this, like this. Okay, so what I have done, um, if you can't tell, is I've actually measured my papers down. What I did is four, about four and an eighth of an inch wide, and then I did 6.75. A standard personal size piece of paper is 3.75 by 6.75. So what I do is I cut that 6.75 height and then I cut the width. Now I can tell you already that I did it. I don't like my tabs to necessarily be, or maybe I do, be that wide. Let me check with my last set, because maybe I do. Looks like I did, actually. They might be a little bit skinnier. So that is perfect. So I did about four and an eighth, a little less than four and an eighth by 6.75 inches. And what I will do from here is I'll take a scratch piece of paper. Usually I have just a scrap piece of personal size paper. Um, I don't have one right here with me. And I will fold it in half 
and then I will fold it in thirds. This is to get the spacing for my tabs. Um, like the TN kits and the Planner Society kits come with additional tabs. I don't usually use them. Um, I just like it to be one continual piece of paper for the entire divider. Um, again, that's just my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with using the divider tabs if you like that. It is definitely simpler because then you can just cut your paper down to 375 by 675 and call it a day. Um, this is just what I have found. I started making dividers years ago and that was before the tab really was a thing. So this is just the way I've always done it. So what I've done, you can see, is I've folded, into, folded a piece of paper into six even spaces. Pretty even, they're not 100%, but they'll work for what I need. If you only want five dividers, then you'll need to space it, like fold your original piece of paper into five pieces. If you want four, then it's easy. You just go, you know, half and half. Um, you just, that's, that's what I usually do for that. And then what I will do is take a pen or a pencil, whatever I have handy. Oh, I was going to try so hard not to shake the camera today, and I'm so sorry. I just bumped it. Okay, so what I'll do is I will take a pen and very, very, very faintly write, put a little tiny dot where I want that to be. So I'll use this piece of paper my lined paper here in this example as a guide. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put one little tiny dot right where I'm gonna end up cutting. And then I'll take my next, I'm gonna try to keep these, is this the right direction? Yes. I'll take my next divider, or what will be my next divider, and do the same thing. This time I'm going to mark where that first dot was, and then again where that next little crease on my paper right here. I'm gonna line it up right there. And then again, the next piece, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up and do one dot and one dot. Now this is my, this is how I usually do dividers. I've never used a silhouette. I do have one. I've never used my silhouette to actually cut out dividers. I know that you can. I think that you can make template, templates use a template to do that. Um, I just haven't taken the time to design or to find one that I wanted to use. Um, so this is definitely a more time consuming process. Um, making dividers, I wanna say, I'll, I'll see when the video's done. I'm guessing it usually takes me about a half hour to make a set of dividers. Now I usually, those dividers last me, well, first of all, I don't really get rid of them. They're just um, I've used my winter ones now for two years. I did make new ones for Valentine's Day because I had bought new papers, but I will save them. I've used my fall ones before over and over. Um, anyway, but I will use these probably for the next couple of months. So 30 minute investment of time for the next couple of months, I can handle. I don't mind that. Um, but I, I am warning you, it does, it does take time to do it. One other thing that I'm going to do um, is I have my, my hole punch. I'm going to link this below. This is one I recommend for, I've recommended for years, three, four years. I don't remember. Um, it does not have an exact spot. Well, it does for your personal size. I've just laid a piece of washi tape down so that it's pretty much um, every time I use it, it's in the exact same spot for my personal size. I do always double check to make sure that it's set to personal size. And I am going to punch holes in my dividers before I do the laminating. You'll see why, and I'll explain why in just a little bit when I get back to that, when I come, when I come back to it. Um, but this is the next step for me. Sometimes I'll do the holes before I do the little dot drawing so that I remember which side to, side to put the dots on and what side I'm going to cut. Um, but I mean, the main thing is that it's done before the laminating, if you're gonna do it the way that I'm, I'm showing you today. I am gonna turn my laminator on so that's with a little beep sound and it's probably gonna beep once it's to temperature. Um, so that's what that is. And you can see that the holes line up. Now one thing I have done before is it's been my 
punch has been ever so slightly off and I've gone through the whole process, punched holes, got them completely done and they don't fit. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't always check them, but it's always a good rule of thumb to double check and make sure that things are lined up. And this is the next step for me. So what I will do is I will take one of these acrylic rulers. I believe that's what it's called. This is used for quilting. Um, I also use it for making dividers. And what I will do is I will line up this left edge of my divider paper to the 3.75 inch line. I'm not sure that you'll be able to see it on camera, um, but it is lined up. So um, 3.75 inches in. And then what I will do is I will use my rotary cutter to cut up to right about where that line that little tiny dot that I drew earlier is and then I take my scissors and I cut in to that line that I just used my rotary cutter for. So you can see that's a divider. That's what where we're going. Um, again, I'll go ahead and turn it to there. You can see when you put it in your paper or in your planner like that, you know, you can see the whole the whole thing. I'm still not convinced that that is the same width. Let's see. Oh, well, it sure does look like it. I don't know that I usually, I really like these dividers and I'm happy with how far they are out. So I guess maybe it is. It's probably just because they're not laminated and back in my planner yet. Um, but that's, that's my first divider. So I'll just put that to the side. The next thing I'm going to do is the same thing, but I'm going to do it a little bit different because I need to make sure that my tab doesn't get cut off. So what I'll do is I'll start up here at the top and then down here I'll go till that bottom line roughly. And again, when I do this, I would rather cut too short than too much. So I will often stop before and then I have to follow up, you know, from down below or from up high and cut into where that divider tab or divider, yeah, the tab will be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with these next four dividers. Um, I have done this a few different ways. I have accidentally cut too much off and had to reprint dividers. I have cut too much off and had to move them around so that what I thought was going to be my third tab ended up being my second tab because I went too far up or, or whatnot with that. But lessons learned. That is the nice thing about using digital papers from Etsy or from really anybody that designs them. Etsy's just usually where I find mine is um, one, they're fairly inexpensive. I think I paid $3 for the set of papers that I'm using to make these dividers. So $3, a little bit of time, the laminating supplies and whatnot. I have everything else on hand already, so it's not, it doesn't cost me that much to make them. Um, and if I accidentally make a mistake, I can go and reprint that page and redo them. Versus like if I bought specialty paper from scrapbook.com, which I've also done, um, or Hobby Lobby or whatever, you have to go back to the store, reorder, and it just... A little bit more of an inconvenience but for what I'm doing I just used digital paper I formatted them to print two to a page again front and back flip the image so that your um, directional papers you know are both correct you don't want to accidentally have shoes facing one way and the opposite way when you flip it over. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but if you're going to do them, you might as well do them right. Um, okay, so you can see it didn't take too long to do all of that. And then I actually do like rounded corners on all of my dividers. Um, not on the actual divider, but on the tab, I should say. So if you look real close, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. See how they all line up? almost perfectly. It's because I used one divider to be the guide for the next. Um, if you look really, really close, I'm going to try to zoom you in. You can see little tiny black dots like right there and right there and right there. And that would bother me if I left 
these dividers as is without cutting, um, like rounding my corners. So I'm going to use a pair of scissors. I do have a corner rounder, but I like them to be ever so faintly rounded. And all I round when I do my dividers is my tab. You could obviously do the divider itself if that's what you prefer. There's my laminator, it's up to temp. So um, if you, you know, if you wanted to do all of the corners you could, I know for a while in the planner community, um, rounded corners on everything was really, like that's where it was at. I never really preferred that. And my corner rounder doesn't go this small. Um, obviously every single one of these is gonna be maybe a smidgen different than the one next to it. Um, like it's not perfectly measured. That one I accidentally, I didn't, I did, I cut too much. Like I didn't end the corner soon enough. So I ended up going in a little bit, but it won't, it won't make a difference. Um, anyway, every single one of these tabs is going to be ever so slightly different because I'm just using my hand. I'm just hand cutting, um, and eyeballing it. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but Again, for what I'm doing, it's it's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't bother me too much for them to be a little bit different. Um, so I have that, and here's the very last one. So that's it. That's my dividers. You can see they're all corner rounded ever so slightly. I'll bring it in, zoom you in. You don't see the black dots anymore. Sometimes I'll use a pencil, like I said, if that's what's handy. That way I can erase just in case I accidentally get it in the wrong spot. But I just used the pen because that's what was here. Let me grab some laminating paper. It might be just a second. Okay, I'm back. I grabbed two laminating pouches. I think I can fit three in a pouch if I remember correctly. And what I'm gonna do is just slide my laminator over so that it's on camera here. And let me do this. Let me start with it off camera for just a second. Now, again, if you haven't um, punched your holes at this point, um, well, you can decide at the end of the video if you'd rather do it the way that I'm showing you or or what. If you do not have a crocodile tool, which is this, it's by We Are Memory Keepers. If you don't have one of these, you may not want to punch your holes at first ahead of time. Um, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this the best way. If you're going to have an edge around your dividers, instead of cutting them flush against the paper, then you will, if you're going to have an edge, then you do not want to punch your holes ahead of time because then your holes are gonna end up, you're gonna have a hole here and then when you punch it after laminating with that edge, you're gonna have another hole further in and it's not gonna line up. Um, if you cut them flesh against the paper, you can just wait until you're done laminating to punch holes. But if you have a crocodile tool, which is what this is, I'll show you at the very end. If you have one of those, you can punch holes, laminate, and then punch holes again using the crocodile tool. And again, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hang in there till the very end of the movie or video so you can see, not a movie, um, see what I'm referring to. I have just found that this is the way I prefer my dividers to look, to be, it's just my preference. So what I've done is I've laid three dividers in one pouch and I am going to very carefully feed it through. I've had this laminator for probably four or five years. Um, I found it at Staples. They had an instant rebate and then an extra rebate. So I ended up getting it for like five or $10. Um, so it's just the one I've always used. You can obviously use a different brand, but I've linked this one below because it's the one I've used for years. And then I just use, these are the three mil pouches, Scotch brand. And you can use thicker if you like thicker laminating on your dividers. Oh, that was too far to the side. Um, I just usually just use the three mil because I don't want my planner to be too 
bulky from the dividers, if that makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll feed it through the first time. It was a little bit far farther over to this side than um, maybe it should have been. So this started to curl, but it looks like it came through just fine. And then what I'll do is I'll actually feed it through the other way. And what that does is it applies pressure to the dividers coming from the other direction. So here where this gap is, it'll kind of close that gap in. If I feel like when it's done, when I'm done with my dividers, that it's not 100% closed in like I want, it's, first of all, it's never gonna be 100% closed in because of the way the lamination works. Um, but if it's not as much as I prefer, I might run each individual divider through my laminator at the very end by itself, um, like after it's already been cut. Um, completely down and punched and everything. So that's something I may do at the end. I'm not 100% sure. I probably won't know until I've cut them down. I do usually also keep my left hand here on the receiving end of my laminator so that it doesn't curl quite as much. And then I try to lay it flat against the surface as soon as it comes out so that um, it can cool down pretty quick. So now I'll just do this other page, the other three dividers here. I really like how these turned out. I had seen this paper on Etsy, had it in my cart for a little while, and then when I went to design them, I just wasn't sure if it was my favorite. But now that they're actually dividers and I'm seeing the whole picture, I think I do like them. And like I said, I'll probably use these for March, April, maybe May. Mayflowers, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not gonna do anything specifically for like, um, what is it, St. Patrick's Day or Easter. I'm not gonna do specific dividers for those. I usually keep it pretty basic and use the same dividers for a good little while. Um, I don't change my planner up all that much. And like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and feed it through this other way. Sometimes after I've done this, I'll just turn my laminator off and be done, but I think I'm gonna leave it on just in case I decide when I'm done that I wanna feed one or two of these dividers through individually by themselves, um, you know, at the very end, but we'll see. One thing I do like too, I mentioned about using like the digital paper from Etsy is usually things are coordinated together. So you can see that this little floral arrangement is actually the same floral arrangement that's in the shoes and it's a spoof of yeah it's a spoof of the one that's on the blue background the blues are all the same the dots are similar I just like using coordinating papers like that you can do that at Hobby Lobby and get some papers that you know match um, or coordinate but this is just what I've usually or what I've done the last several times I'm just gonna put that on the floor but that's not gonna work so I'm just gonna put that to the side and then what I will do is I will quickly use scissors and separate these. Yeah. And this next part is the part that takes a little more concentration, so I may speed through, I may just do this without talking much um, and then speed through it on the camera just to, or on the video itself when I edit it so that you're not watching me without anything going on. But what I'll do is I mentioned this earlier because I like a little bit of a, oh, I don't remember the word. There's a word, but I like a little bit of an edge around my dividers. I don't usually... Oh, I don't know if I've ever made dividers that I've cut flush against the paper. Um, I like a little bit of a gap. So what I will do is ever so slightly, this is just eyeballing it. I don't, um, I don't like have any sort of measurement that I use, but what I will do is use my rotary cutter and acrylic ruler again, and I will just cut so that, let me see if I can zoom you in, you can see there's a little bit of an edge around the entire divider. And then again here, what I'll do is I'll take my scissors, I will do the corner right here. I'll do this side again, rounding that corner, bringing it into the divider, and then I'll flip it, and then just cut right up to that. And that divider 
is done except for punching the last holes. So I'm going to do that with my other five and I will be right back to show you my last step. Okay, so I'm going to cut back in here. Um, obviously, you could use scissors if you don't have a rotary cutter um, and acrylic ruler and whatnot. I just like using it because it's easier for me to get a straight edge. I do um, prefer having a nice clean cut, if at all possible. I have used scissors on dividers before, but as close as, I mean, as, as much as you try, I ended up being just a little bit wobbly when I did it that time um, and I just they weren't my favorite dividers like I wasn't in love with the quality so I just decided to go back to using the rotary cutter using the rotary cutter is a little bit more I don't want to say dangerous I have cut my finger I had my finger too far over and I sliced a good portion of my pointer finger off one time so be careful if you're going to use that um, if you're going to use a rotary cutter, you can also use like a, what are they called? A trimmer, like a paper trimmer. But if you use a paper trimmer, you can't necessarily do the side that has the divider. So what I recommend is just take it really slow. Um, I'm going a little bit quick today just because I've done so many sets. So I, I know what I'm like, what my next step is in my brain. I can kind of think ahead to the next step. So, um, I've probably made a dozen or more sets of dividers for different, oh, probably more than that for different planners. I don't have them all anymore, but just go slow. Again, you can reprint if you need to, if you use digital paper. I used cardstock to print mine on just because it's a little bit thicker, um, which is another reason I just used the three mil on the laminator. If I just used regular paper. I may use a five mil. Um, if I use paper, single-sided paper from Hobby Lobby, I'll fold it in half. But with that, you do have to be extra careful when you do the laminating so that it doesn't end up separating. Like you definitely need to edge around it because otherwise it will separate. But that is that. Okay. I am going to run these back through because there's a couple of spots here especially around the tabs where it didn't seal 100%, but I will just do that after, um, after I'm done filming, just so that you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do that part. Um, let me put them back in order. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my dividers, and they're pretty much exactly like I want. Now this is called a crocodile, and what I'm going to do, it's not the... 100% the same size as my, like it's not 100% si the same size as the whole punch that I used, um, but it's so close. Um, the whole punch that I used is not one quarter inch like a standard handheld hole punch. You could definitely just do quarter inch. I just use the smaller, but you can see let me see if I can get you close enough. You can see that it, I've just punched holes right back through where my original holes were. Now, if I were to use my punch and put this in after it was laminated and punch, it will scoot the holes closer to the edge just a little bit. So if you don't have a crocodile, you and you want the edge around your dividers, you'll want to wait until you're completely done laminating before you actually punch your holes. So that's my little um, word of wisdom 
with punching holes. The only thing that I dislike about the crocodile is it just shoots these little plastic chads, is what they're called, all over the place. So I'll, I'll find them, I found them on my eyelid. I have found them on my clothes. I have found them on the floor. Um, sometimes I'll do this right over a trash can, kind of squeeze it, turn it over, but for sake of time and not wanting a trash can on my table workspace here, I'm just gonna do them and shoot chads all over the place. I'll have to clean them up later, not the end of the world, but I will, thought I'd mention that. This crop out aisle tool, I believe, <laughs> what it actually, what you can use it for is you can punch holes, there's another side over here, and then there's like little metal pieces that you put in there and you can um, like connect, what's it called? Like several pieces of paper together using that. I'm not 100% sure. I've got the supplies to do it. I've done it a few times, but I honestly don't even use it for that. I keep my crop out aisle around because the holes that it makes with this side are almost identical in size to the hole punch that I use. So I pretty much, not pretty much, I only use it for making dividers at this point in my life. It's a handy little tool though. I, I've had it for, I don't know, three years maybe. I found it on Amazon. I'll link it below in case you're into making your own dividers and wanting to do it the way that I've done it. So that is it guys. Um, that's how I make dividers. I have been asked so many times over the last several years. Um, you know what? I'll actually, since I'm filming, I might as well just go ahead instead of putting them in and actually change them out. This first little thing is a page protector, sheet protector divided thing from Foxy Fix. I don't know. I really like having it in the front because it adds just something um, to my planner, but I don't know if I'll put it back in because I don't have any die cuts that match this digital paper. Um, but other than that, that is how I make dividers. I've been asked, like I said, so many times over the last years, several years, um, and I just haven't ever taken the time to turn the camera on, but I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope that it was, maybe you learned one little tip through my process. I hope that you guys have a great week. I'm gonna have to find something else to use because this heart or this bow doesn't match, but I'll have to find something else for that. That's it. That's my new dividers for my Filofax. Um, I do the same process for my pocket or A5, depending on um, what planner I use, determines how many pages I can fit when I'm printing. I have done them where I have like my A5 and my personal size matching. Pocket size, you can fit four to a page. I've done A6 dividers, personal wide dividers. It's, it's a pretty simple process once you get it going. If you have all the tools and supplies, um, it's pretty, pretty easy going. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process. Leave me a comment if you did. And I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>